helicopter operator. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Good morning and welcome to Holy Week, this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian Witts, here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Now, as usual, give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it, folks. So let's waste no time. Yes. Easter bunnies, bunny rabbits, and all that other stuff. Let's get to it. Story number one. The Enlightenment era and scandals hit local religions uh, pretty hard. It has hit local religion pretty hard. That's the Enlightenment era and the scandals. Now, we with constant scandals rocking churches. Now, this goes back for some time. But, but uh, all types of stuff. You know, now the COVID-19 mess also rocked the church as well. And the growing woke uh, enlightenment era that we seem to be in local churches and religions have been hit pretty hard some churches have tried everything to rebound even merging with other churches now attendance has also been down and technology has shifted some services online uh, this, church, this church story made it in due to the religious holy seasons that we're in right now story number one that's why i made it this week big big story number two language classes at gerard free library are in the spotlight especially the teacher ron Safel of liberty who has who has taught french over the past decade to a group that originated at saint rose church in gerard and has also taught at YSU, Poland High School, and the Poland Library is in the spotlight. John Patrick Gaeta, a correspondent of The Vindicator, uh, contributed a report published March 16th, shining more light on the language arts. Now, uh, now th this story made it in because five European languages lost around a fifth of their enrollment from 2016 to 2021, and French lost the most, according to InsideHigherEd.com. That's why story number two made it in. The story number three, Weathersfield investing in the community. Weathersfield is seeking $447,000 to help with the construction of a community center, according to a report from Mason Cole, published March 16th of The Vindicator. Now, the vision is a 91 foot by 70 foot, one story, 6,300 square foot center with large and small meeting rooms and a warming kitchen to be used by safety forces and other groups, according to the report. Story number three, Lakeview gets a new superintendent, Ashley Hendricks. Uh, who has 18 years of service says she's looking forward to engaging with the community and is committed to the Lakeview schools promising future ahead according to a WKBN report out of Cortland, Ohio. So Lakeview will be getting a new super story number five wastewater work opposed by some in Youngstown. It appears that Youngstown is now asking a federal judge to reduce the scope of work in improvements to its wastewater system. Now, this is according to a Vindicator report published March 19th by David Skolnick. The report says that it's due to skyrocketing costs. Now, according to the report, the cost went from $62 million to more than $240 million. Now, the report goes on to explain an ongoing dispute. Story number six, local poster workers on high alert. U.S. Postal Service is now being haunted by the crime spirit. One local report says that the U.S. Postal Service, mail, a mail carrier, was robbed of his arrow key on Hilton Avenue on the city's Yonks, or South Side, Youngstown South Side. Now, this is after a postal worker was killed in Warren a few weeks ago. Now, if crime is the equalizer, then the Postal Service is now being tested to even the scales and protect its carriers who carry the load for the entire Postal Service. Now, if you did not know, the letter carrier is the most important piece in the Postal Service's puzzle. Now, they also have the hardest job and face the most challenges in the profession. Now, according to the report, it was the 
carrier's last stop when he was robbed. This story is still developing. This was story number six. Let's make it to the top two this week. Big story number seven in the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. This holy Easter weekend, if you celebrate it, Passover, we have Ramadan going on, people fasting, and all types of holy things happening. And on top of that, there's a holy war going on locally and across the world. Story number seven, Youngstown sees a reduction in crime. Youngstown Mayor Jamel Tito Brown and Police Chief Carl Davis have something to celebrate in what appears to be working somewhat. Now, the crime fighting initiative seems to have reduced violent crime in the city. Now, the initiative, the initiative, the initiative has been successful at removing weapons, drugs and those individuals committing such crimes off of the street according to police chief carl davis now davis also explains how the initiative may serve as a formula to help other communities fight crime now the crime fighting partnership that patrolled the streets conducted nearly 500 traffic stops resulting in 47 criminal arrests now 35 drug cases were also initiated five stolen vehicles were captured and 11 weapons cases were initiated showing that drug charges steadily rose from 86 in the second half of 2021 to 188 but violence crime well violent crime dropped from this is what got the story because violent crime dropped from 179 to 109 according to a vindicator report published march 20th by ed runyon now there was a conflicting report from a caller on 570 wkbn in regard to this story and to this report because as soon as the this report made headlines two young males 17 and 18 were shot in a car on the city's west side the 17 year old did not make it. Now, this story is still developing. That's why story number seven also made it to the top this week. Big, big help. Story number eight in the top local headline and developing news story that made it in on Easter before the, the weekend, but the Passover. Well, Good Friday's coming, and whew, I've been working hard. But I'm still working, baby. And that's what keeps me going. Story number eight Who showed up to vote? It's a movement every week in here. Rather you registered as an independent or voted on a Democrat or Republican ticket, the big question is did you exercise your right to vote? Now the Ohio Capitol Journal says that Northeast Ohio's voter turnout was 50% lower than past presidential primaries. Now this is a problem that many activists will be trying to solve. Now too many distractions or just lack of awareness could be causing this problem. People do not know the power of a representative republic and a democracy. That could be the problem. People have just become too unaware. That's why Sterner Ray made it to the top this week. Well folks, those are our top eight local headlines in developing news stories that I made it this week. I'll be right back with the top eight international headlines in developing news stories. So don't you go anywhere. You're the media to be Brian West. Stop right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Folks, it is uh, Easter weekend. Well, we're headed into Easter weekend. This is Passover and Good Friday weekend. So I have to tell an Easter story. And I remember uh, our Easter so vividly back in the day with my family when we lived on St. Louis. It was me and my mother and my sisters. We lived on the street. And uh, we used to have this dog, and his name was Champ. And, I mean, this dog had character. But when I saw well, the this, this story I'm going to tell taught me something amazing about this, this nature, and how we all have this character. And it's about resurrection, how people will fight for redemption. And I think Champ had loved our family he really did and then when my when my mom had met her uh, significant other at that time and then he started whining and dying and uh he was a you know he came in and he had a dog this big doverman and he had brought him over to the house this is when he was trying to you know being with my mom and the dog champ got jealous of the dog and you know, this we were kids, we were like, wow, you know, you don't think dogs could think like human beings, but Champ got upset when the dog had came in the house, you know, and dogs get real territorial. But Champ, this is this is it was an unbelievable story because Champ went toe to toe with this dog in the house. I mean I mean, this was a little mutt 
went up to it with a he went up against a purebred Doberman pitcher. Went up against him. And I mean they were fighting and tussling and champ just would not back down. He wanted his family. Me, my sisters, and my mother. And he would not accept defeat. I mean, this dog was willing to fight to the death. So bad that he I seen him get it's almost like he was dead, but he resurrected to win this fight. And seeing all of this happen right before my eyes at a young age, I said, that dog deserved the name Champ. Because that's what champions do. You get knocked down a thousand times. A thousand times. We fall down and we get up. But I'm saying it's just a sinner who fell down. The damn dog got back up a thousand times just for his family. Resurrect. I saw a story this holiday season. Champ the dog. I remember you, Champ. He passed away when I was just a yay high, but that dog deserved the name Champ. Let's waste no time, folks. Get ready for this Passover season. Let's get to it. Story number one, the pension story. USA Today has a piece with a new survey suggesting that most Americans still don't have a pension. Now, speaking of resurrection, now the article goes on to say that between 1975 and 2019, the number of people actively participating in private sector pension plans dwindled from 27 million to fewer than 13 million. The article says that this comes from a congressional report. The article goes on to explain how this could hinder and has hindered many Americans from achieving the American dream without money and with money. Is, is on everybody's mind and that's why this story is still developing because without money and with money money is on everybody's mind that's what story number one made it story. story number two the israel palestinian story is now amplified and hunger world bank reports of catastrophic famine in the gaza strip due to the food shortages for more than a million people could you imagine going hungry? A million people. Folks, that's serious. The Washington-based bank says that urgent action is needed to prevent widespread deaths within the next two months. Folks, this could be sad. Where there's death, there's disease. Now, this report is in The Guardian, and it is extensive and is filled with how the Palestinian people are suffering. That's why story number two made in this week. War is bad, folks. Big one. Story number three. Russia, Russia, Russia. In all these stories, folks, I came across a Hitler documentary. And... And I, they translated his speech in English. And for the first time, I could understand what he was saying. And it was unbelievable. You, you see these people rise to power and their vengeance and their, their grit. And the world doesn't understand this type of stuff. But right now we're seeing it in front of our eyes, what war does to people. War. And when somebody... The, now, I, I'm not comparing any of these, but I'm telling you, when somebody rises to power, when a country is struggling, this is how it happens. You're seeing it before your very eyes, and it, it's in every ball field. So that's what I'm saying. Now, now the Russia story is, is also keeps trending because Putin has allied, and he's allied with China, North Korea, and even Africa. The Kremlin has even re released precious black artifacts of holy israel biblical characters to museums never that have never been really seen across the world now one headline in business insider says that putin's war has fired up russia's economy but ends with their that saying that there will be some problems ahead now the article continues with bullet points about how russia has struggled has, has well he's shrugged off western sanctions by ramping up trade with other countries like India and China. Now the bullet points end with Russia's war economy. Russia's war economy is weaker than it appears and could face some major problems. Now the article goes on to explain data projections that lie ahead for Russia. The point is, just like I said, 
when you read these stories and you see these people rise to power they get a lot of followers there's a lot of people losing in this game of life and when they see these this happening this is what you see you see dictators rise you see dictators falls and some people when you see analysts some people see justice in these dictators. That's why story number three made in this movie. Story number four, a thin line between pay and poverty. Fortune says that CEOs and shareholders are gobbling up hundreds of billions of dollars in profits at, as workers get laid off. The piece goes on to explain how this is now. This is nothing new. Now, the story goes on to point out some staggering numbers from Oxfam stating that a British nonprofit focused on eradicating poverty is focused on eradicate that is focused on eradicating poverty. They analyzed that more than 200. Well, the, the story says that it was it's a nonprofit that focuses on eradicating pro poverty it stated that which analysts which they analyze that more than I have to get this right that more than 200 US corporations that when they assessed they, they're quoted in the article they're saying that they, this is what it says that there's an inequality footprint that means that there's something that you can see a trail when you're looking at inequality and it's been going on for a while this is it says that it, there's an inequality footprint in which most of the money that always ends up at the top no matter what, you could be, you could get a hundred thousand dollar payroll for three years, and then all of a sudden, this money somehow ends up at the top. Now, the article goes on to explain how CEO pay has ballooned since the pandemic hit, increasing by 31 percent from 2018 to 2022. The article goes on to explain how shareholders and CEO pay has risen to record levels in the aftermath of the COVID 19 crisis. So, it means even while people were suffering. Somebody was still getting a paycheck. Now, according this is all according to this piece. Now, the article goes on, goes on further to say how the system is rigged. The story is still developing. This is at a time when unionization is trying to balance things out. And when it's low, membership is low. Story number four is just making headlines because sometimes I'm telling you people see justice in criminals. They see justice in dictators. This is what happens when the scales are trying to even themselves out. Well, folks, those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. Right back with the top, top four, folks. There's, there's when people, when you see people suffering and dying, it may be time for you to wake up and realize your own power. That's why story number four made it this week. Big B Hill. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week, folks. Is this this we're in holy season right now passover good friday be good i've tried to be good but uh this week we're talking about the police and in this new environment how people your brain is being tested constantly on what is good what is bad what is good what is bad if a police officer mistakenly comes into your house, shoots somebody, what is good, what is bad, the justice system, what is good, what is bad, your race, what is good, what is bad, and you're constantly being tested, tested to your breaking point, wife, uh, domestic violence, wives may be getting abused, what is good, what is bad, why the husband is doing it. The judge listens to the crying out, the pouring of children dying from their parents. But a police officer comes into your house, sitting there, sleeping. Get up. Oh, what did I do? Pow, you're dead. Cop realizes that he's suffering from insomnia. He's tired. He's paranoid. His job is stressing, stressing him out. What is good, what is bad, folks, this holiday season? War on TV. We're seeing it constantly. Conflicts. We don't know which side to choose. We see people dying. We want to be a part of it, so we protest. Stop it. Stop the killing. Who has the master plan, folks? This is what we're suffering with this holiday season. Churches. Even that. Can we trust the reverends with our money when they're riding around in jets? Some of them even involved with secret societies. What is good? What is bad? While we're suffering mentally, physically, emotionally, our, our, our mental, we're, we're stuck. We're sheep. Many of us looking for shepherds. 
And then when the black sheep runs off into the woods, faces off against the wolves, he doesn't have any backup, folks. What is good, what is bad this holiday season? That's what we're learning come Good Friday. A lot of people see justice in war, and a lot of people don't. So the mental folks, the fact that we have to get up, maybe have to fight for ourselves. <sighs> you made a song about it. You can be good, and you can be bad. But when you're stuck in the middle, you can be a servant of peace. Woo! Let's waste no time, folks. Let's get to it. Story number five. Financial freedom seems like a hard swallow nowadays. Some stories about bank deposits are making headlines after an Oklahoma woman deposited 13.5K into her account only to notice that the money did not show up according to MoneyWise the next day or so. Articles about how a surgeon and his wife also made some headlines. They were, they were making six-figure salaries and were facing some financial hardship after having to pay some fees to their financial advisor. CNBC also has a headline stating that 56% of Americans can't even afford a $1,000 emergency expense. Such stories continue to resonate across the financial spectrum because money is on everybody's mind in these hard times. That's why story number five made it this week. Story number six, the world has convinced women to get an abortion. Has the world done it? They're just making a choice on their own. Sadly, folks, in the real world, some people have convinced themselves that abortion is the best choice to make. One article in the Wall Street Journal says that after Roe versus Wade, after the decision, more women are choosing abortion pills. Some reports even explains how many retailers are now carrying the abortion pills. Now, this, this story is still developing because in 2020, medication abortion and two drug reg uh, regimen was approved uh, to to terminate pregnancies up to 10 weeks of just of uh, gestation and uh, this is according to this is a this is accounting for 53 percent of uh of the u.s procedures if you did not know so uh i hope that makes sense to you there's abortions uh, certain ways people get rid of their babies before they even hit the womb now the report by uh gut -Mutcher, According to the report, he says he, he shows that the number and rate of abortions performed in the United States climbed in 2023. Now, this is during, as we celebrate the months of fertility, Easter, you know, Passover. Now, Gutmacher also found that more than 642,000 medication abortions in 2023 were performed through formal health care providers. How crazy is that? In 2023, the number of abortions in the United States increased to about 1 million. Folks, this, is, uh, this story is still developing. Uh, like I said, we're deciphering from good, from, from bad. We all battle with the conscious mind. And some people just uh, uh, make some different, make the wrong choices. So uh, that's why they say, where does that energy go? Nobody knows, but it may be in the mind of somebody who's sent to this earth to bring people to, to their knees. Dictators, lawyers, criminals. Some people may say they're crazy, but sometimes when you listen to their uh, motives, you'd be like, something sent this person here. And uh, that's why story number six, I was made to the top two this week. Big, big head. Story number seven and the top two international headlines and developing news stories that have made it this week. This Easter, Easter Passover, Easter will be next Sunday, so I'll be with you on two days. They have Ramadan going on, people fasting. So uh, I've decided to come in here and share my time with you. Story number seven, the brutal migration story. Speaking of good and bad, legal, immigra legal immigrants are stating their opinions uh, about the illegal migration story 
as more migrants uh, continue to pour into the United States. Now, the, the report by Fox News says that they see unfairness due to the fact that they have to they have they have spent some of them have spent years following the rules to become citizens. And so they see this as unfair. Now, the story goes on to explain how it took one man 20 years to become a citizen and how he's been trying for for four years just to get his wife here. Now this is yet another story on how Americans who have been following the rules see unfairness in the ones who do, who, who, uh, who, fo who follow the rules or see unfairness in the ones who break the law. So there's this two tug of war going on. Break the, un they see unfairness in the rule of law here. Now, this story is still developing. The Washington Examiner says that 200,000 illegal immigrants escaped deportation because of paperwork problems. So, number seven, almost made to the top this week, folks. Big news. Story number eight. Top. International headline and developing news story that made this week. Rumbling and stumbling. This resurrection season where you celebrate the purple cloth, if you don't know about it. It's the day third days Jesus is supposed to rise up Yeshua Yahweh the resurrected Savior of all mankind of all of our sins and then uh, they have the holy months in Ramadan these are the prophets the people who were here way before our time walking on the earth set the foundation down folks story number eight inflation is killing everything slowly Fox Business says that uh, the, that dollar store chains are set to close 1,000 stores as experts point to inflation and crime as being top factors. There's probably over 16,000 dollar stores across America. Now, when looking at the data, it appears that people experiencing high poverty seem to be committed to the most seems to be committing the most crimes, while some who have an abundance of wealth seem to be using the, un the unfortunate as pawns on this board. Well, this story is still developing because inflation causes people to do wild things, especially money, hunger, and revenge to avenge a certain cause, especially war. So we could be seeing a lot of uh, things happening in these uh, coming months. Well, folks, those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. I hope you got something out of today's program. I always get something out of the research. As usual, I thank all the news, all of us, the journalists, the people on the front lines. I hope you... Uh, keep the party going because I keep the party, I keep the information going, I navigate your story just to keep people informed. So thanks to all the news outlets, the journalists, the media. If you want to show us some support here at Meth Aid, it does not take much. All you do is visit the website on the screen, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor a program. <sighs> I'll be back next week if you want to show up, if you want to actually even come to the store. Uh, I'm at the store at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio. I'll be back next week, folks, looking through over 200 or more stories just to keep you informed, Lord willing. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to the media this week with me, Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens.